hello and welcome back and today I want to walk you guys through a huge number of ways in which your data is safe on a Synology NAS. I am going to be doing this with a number of other NAS platforms but I wanted to focus on Synology first mainly because they are going through their recent update of DSM-7. At the time of recording, DSM-7 is in beta, and of course DSM-6.2 is still very much the go-to software platform for NAS. But today's video, the reason I wanted to tackle them first was because for all I know, by the time this video goes out, DSM-7 may well have been fully released, and any video that I make for DSM-6.2 may be utterly useless. So I thought for now, I'll focus on DSM-7, where all of the choices and all of the features that I'm going to talk about today are exactly the same but we get to use the new user interface. So what are we going to do in today's video? Well firstly we're going to talk about cheese. Now as you can see here on screen I have got a nice cheese platter. For those that aren't aware this is a lovely bit of cheese uh, or several of them in fact that we had over Christmas and short of my terrible spelling of the word Gloucestershire um, again, US watchers may have a different pronunciation of that. I think it's not a terrible picture. And, you know, who doesn't like cheese? Answer in the comments. So, in today's video, I want to show you guys that this photo, I'm going to back it up and keep it safe in a number of ways. We're going to cover redundancy, we're going to cover recovery, and we're going to cover backups. And I'm going to show you in just a handful of minutes how quickly we can set up a number of different ways to back up this file. And I'm gonna do it from scratch. So first thing we're gonna do is create a shared folder. This shared folder is where we're gonna keep this file and we're gonna create a brand new one. This is a tiny little file, but all the steps in today's video apply to files big and small. It doesn't make any difference. As you can see, it is a 5.3 meg file, but again, you could use something massive if you choose and keep that minimized and of course I should also highlight that all the steps in today's video uh, work out if you're a Mac user, a Windows user or an Android user. Also there's building work going on behind me and that may dip into the sound occasionally. I do apologize for that. So let's create our new shared folder. Now a shared folder is a folder on a NAS that can be shared with people. I know that sounds really obvious by the name but you'd be amazed. The idea is that this is a folder that you can give people um, access to at your behest whether they are a Synology user or not and it can also be compatible with other file systems again Windows, Mac, Linux and more. So this is the folder we're going to call this one super important photo and from here that's our name of it it's living on the NAS and we can go through some of the early steps so straight, straight away we can enable a recycle bin just like you would expect on a PC or Mac system. We're going to leave that as yes. Then we're going to click next. Then we can choose whether we want to encrypt this file, uh, this folder. So we're going to go ahead and encrypt it. So now, not only is this file going to be on the NAS, but it's also going to be in an encrypted shared space. Then we're going to click next. Then we're going to enable data integrity to protect our file, which is fantastic. That's where if there's any errors over the course of time, BTRFS will step in and help. So we've got the file self-healing that comes with it. We can even compress the file to save space, which I'm, I'm not going to do. And we can even give this folder a quota, but we're not going to bother with that. We care more about keeping things safe right now. Click Next. And we're creating our new super safe shared folder. And this is the folder that we're going to put our super important picture of cheese in. We're going to save our encryption key locally. So now we've got our encryption key. If ever we need to recover that, and of course, no encryption key, if you're trying to recover afterwards, may be difficult. So you don't have to use encryption, but it is advantageous. From here, we can say which users on the NAS can access this shared folder. I'm going to just let admin and Robbie, that's myself, access it. Click next. And there is our super important photo album. And if we go into the file manager on our NAS, we're able to see super important photo album. From here, we're going to drag and drop our super important picture of cheese into that album drag it straight in and now our super important picture of cheese is on the NAS so now we've got it on there let's start keeping this thing safe we've already got all of the recovery stuff that we built in um, all the protective layers at least onto the super important photo shared folder now we can start digging that little bit deeper the next thing we want to do is create snapshots 
Now, for those that aren't aware, a snapshot is when you can have an album that periodically the system will create a kind of time-centric image of, that it can revert to over time. As The more snapshot images you create of a folder as you upload and delete and change files over time, it gives you the ability to scroll through that timeline of images and revert back to a previous version. Think of a flick book where you would make an animation with a flick book with each page being slightly different. Snapshots represent each one of those pages and allow you to scroll through and find the earlier page. But you have to make sure you keep a record of each one of the pages in between. So you need to download the uh, tool from Synology. We've already installed it. If we have a look at it there, the Snapshot Replication um, app. Once that's installed, you can go ahead and go into Snapshots here. Then select the album where you want to use. In my case, the super important photo folder. And from there, we can go ahead and start creating a snapshot record of it. So we go ahead and this is going to be snapshot photos. We're just going to give it a snapshot cheese even. Let's give it that name. And now it's going to go ahead and it's created a snapshot of that. Now we can go further. We can create a timeline of these snapshots. We can create an extended history of snapshots. We have lots of options. So we can create a snapshot schedule. We can go ahead and talk about the retention policy of our snapshots. How many do we keep? Do we have them recycling themselves after a number of days? There's loads of options all built in to create our snapshots over time. And all of these snapshots will take place. We can go and only have the one. We can create loads of snapshots. And again, if we add more photos, if we edit this photo, this snapshot will allow us to revert back to the original picture of that lovely, lovely cheese. So snapshots are obviously a big, big part of in NAS protection. But let's be honest, if all of your images and all of your backups are all within the same NAS, that's not a backup. That is just keeping versions and revisions. Next, let's talk about those backups. And for that, we want to head to our trusty Hyper Backup tool. Now, Hyper Backup allows us to backup selected folders on the NAS to numerous locations and create a really distinct backup strategy. And what we're going to do is create three separate backup routines for our super important picture of cheese. So let's go for one of the most technically demanding. First backup is going to be backing up to another NAS. Now, we, as mentioned, I have another NAS here ready to go. I've already backed, I've already got this NAS up and running. And for those that are going to synchronize with another NAS, and this doesn't just apply to a Synology NAS, this can apply to a QNAP NAS, an Asus Dot, a TerraMaster, any NAS system that has the support of R-Sync. Just make sure you go into the, if you're backing up to another Synology NAS, that you go into File Services on the control panel, go into R-Sync, and enable the R-Sync service here. Once you've done that, you can head back into Hyper Backup on the NAS, where we're backing up our super important picture of cheese, and click R-Sync. From here, you can say what kind. If you're using a Synology server, leave that as it is, or if you're using a third party, select it there. Once you've done that, click the down arrow and it will search the local area network, your LAN, for a NAS. Bear in mind, you can use remote internet-based NASs as well there in the background. So as it scans, it's going to go ahead and find our NAS on the local area network and it's found our 1821 plus in the IP ending 104. And there it is, 104. So from there, we can go ahead and scroll down. We can say whether we want to use encrypted transmissions, if we choose, to make sure our data can't be captured in between. And then you need to enter your login information for the other NAS. You'll know whether it works, because once you click the arrow to click down to see the folders on the target NAS, it will, it will allow you to see all of those albums. So from here, I'm going to click the photo album there on the other NAS, which is here. And now we've got our target folder on that NAS in that directory. If you have other backups in place, you can add this to those or go to an, uh, other means of shared folders. Then click Next. 
From here, it will ask us to say what part of our local NAS do we want to commit to this backup. For me, it's got to be the super important photo of cheese. Click next. And now it's going to go ahead and say if we want to back up any applications that are on our NAS. We can do that, but for now, I'm not going to do that because this video is all about backing up that sweet, sweet cheese. Now we can name this. I'm going to name this backup the cheese backup, obviously. I'm sorry about that building work noise going on behind me. And then you can enable lots of things here, such as notifications to let you know when it's happened or if there's problems. You can compress the backup so you can make the backup smaller. And you can enable it on a schedule so either this backup will take place as and when changes happen or at a certain time of day. If these are large file backups, unlike our cheese photo, then maybe you want to aim for some time in the morning when the NAS is at its least used. And you can run a number of backups as well as the integrity checks if you choose. After that, click Next. As you can see, it's now going to ask you about versioning that you can revert to if you choose. I'm going to go with uh, backup rotation and that older versions will over um, new versions will overwrite the old one after 256 revisions. It's now completing and summarizing um, our backup happening in hyper backup. And now as we can see, it is ready. So we're going to go ahead and click yes. And now it's going to back up that awesome picture of cheese over to the target NAS there, the 1821 plus. That's all going to be set up and we're sending that file over to the other NAS. But again, this isn't the only way we can run a backup here. So right now, we can go ahead and start a new backup if we choose. This new backup, actually we'll let that finish there in the background and we can even look at the other NAS if we choose. We can go ahead and load it up. And again, this may take a minute to refresh on my list. Scroll there, move it to list view. Let it back up. As we can see, the backup's taking place. There's the versioning as well. There's our photo there. And again, the versioning and backup of there have taken place. So next, we can do our next stage of backups as well. Here is where we start talking about backing up in more remote ways. So next, we can talk about backing up to a cloud service. Now, whether you're going to use Synology's own cloud service provider, Synology C2, and using the likes of Hybrid Share, you can also back up to third-party cloud services, such as Google Drive. If you want to back up to Google Drive with your important information, such as important photos of cheese, click Google Drive and then click Next. It will then, via Chrome, connect with your Google account once the verification has taken place, it will ask you to confirm the connection of your Google Drive account and the Synology Hyper Backup tool. Click Allow. It will redirect this information back to these two different locations. And now it will ask you to create the backup task. So in my case, I can scroll down. Simply select the folder that you want the photo or images or whatever from your NAS to back up to on the cloud. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and select the album photo. And then from there, you can go ahead and click next. From here, it will ask you which one of the shared folders on your Synology NAS you want to back up. And of course, in my case, it's the super important photo of cheese album. Then click next. And once again, it will ask you if you want to back up applications. Once again, it will ask you about a backup schedule. Once again, it will talk about encrypted data transmissions and backup rotation. And now we're backing up the super important photo of cheese to our Google Drive account. And our Google Drive account over here at Photo, as you can see, it's already started that backup process and it's going to start backing up that photo for us there. So we can run that backup. It's already created the protocol. And now we have got two different stages of backup in place here on our Synology NAS. So again, we've already got a NAS to NAS backup. We've got a NAS to cloud backup. And we have got, um, a sh we've got our shared folder heavily encrypted 
and we have got snapshots happening in the background notwithstanding the fact that on our NAS itself we also have RAID protection too. So what about a, a USB backup? That's right, Hyper Backup will also allow you to back up to a connected USB. So if you go ahead back into Hyper Backup, this time select local folder or USB, this allows us to not only back up our super important photo to a USB drive periodically, you can even back it up to another folder on the NAS. Go ahead and click next. Once again, we've already selected that folder. So again, we can go ahead and select what we want to back up to and from. There's our destination, the USB. Super important cheese photo. Click next. Once again, um, app backups. We're going to skip those. We've got the schedule. We've got um, rotation of uh, recovery images. And then we can click backup. And now we have got a backup in place to a USB drive. There's even a dedicated USB backup tool readily available from Synology that allows you to run these backups um, automatically once a drive is connected to the device. It's a very versatile tool and I do recommend it for a number of you that are going to be backing up regularly with your Synology NAS onto a USB drive, perhaps for ongoing work, perhaps for college or school work, or simply at the end of every day to connect a USB drive to your NAS system and run a backup. Once again, these USB drives, you can go for an import-export, you can do for just photos if you choose, and as you can see, export data from the disk station to an external USB. Go ahead, call it Cheese USB. Select the source folder, which again, of course, super important cheese photo, the destination on the USB drive, and again, we can give it a new folder name if we want, Cheese Backup, click OK. Cheese backup folder selected, click select. We can say, do we want multi-versioning? Do we want the two folders to be mirrored? Do we want this to be incremental? Incremental meaning that only it will do one big backup and then after that it will only back up the changed files over time. For now, we're just gonna go for incremental, then click next. We can say how we want this backup to take place. So this backup can happen whenever a USB drive is connected. You can do it so that it will immediately eject and safely remove the USB as needed and of course enable a schedule if you choose. Click next. From here you can then also pre-select file types. In our case we only want to back up images. Let's be honest one specific image. And then from there we can run this USB backup if we choose or this backup will happen every time that drive is connected. You can just hear a USB drive beeping there in the background. I may have spoken over that. As you can see, it's completed the USB backup there in the logs there for us. And it's dismounted the USB drive for us, making sure that we don't accidentally remove a drive and potentially damage it. And these are just a number of key ways in which data can be backed up so easily on a Synology NAS. And in this way, we can make sure that all of our photos of cheese are never going to be lost. So once again, I'd like to thank Double Gloucester and Onion and Chive, Cheddar and Truffle and all of the gang in helping us today in understanding all the ways in which we can back up the data on our Synology NAS in so many ways and so easily. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, thank you so much and click like if you did. If you want to subscribe to learn more, go down there and click the button and I will see you next time.